Hi everyone, this is Jeff from Stratford Helms, and today we're going to be taking a look at calculator usage for fractions. And this will mainly apply to the high set and high set students, but it's certainly something a GED or a TAS student can find value in as well. Uh, on the right side of your screen, you're going to see a PDF, and it's entitled Calculator Quick Start Fractions and Mixed Numbers, and that's something that I created uh, some time ago uh, to help students with utilizing the calculator for fractions and mixed numbers as well as improper fractions. And uh, it's really a nice step-by-step -step guide. I'll put the download link to that uh, in the bottom of, of this video in the description. In the center of your screen, you'll see a paint window, which if you watch the cross multiply and divide video that I did, it lets me kind of write things, you know, we can draw out our work, I can write things like hi. <laughs> and um, that's what we're gonna do with that. On the left side here, we see the TI-30 XS MultiView, which is the only calculator allowed on the GED high set or task. And it's the calculator that the quick start guide is written for and it's downloadable. So this is PC or Mac friendly. It's made by Texas Instruments who are the maker of the calculator. And this is very valuable software to have on your computer, especially if you don't have a TI-30 XS MultiView at home. So that's the calculator that we always work with at Helms. And you can have one right on your desktop for a 90 day free trial. With that being said, let's get on back to that PDF on the right hand side, take a quick look at it. Okay, so calculator quick start fractions and mixed numbers. So you can download this, you can print it out if you have a printer. If not, you can certainly look at it on your phone, your tablet, your computer, whatever, and follow along. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with this and I'm gonna show you uh, step-by-step -step with the calculator on your screen and you know the, the uh, scratch paper in the middle if we need it, um, how to go ahead and work with fractions here. Okay, so let's take a look. So as we page down in the quick start guide, we see how to work with fractions, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna use the example here of two thirds, okay? So uh, we'll get to a clean sheet of scrap paper here. Now, so two thirds, so that's two over three, okay? Now, if we wanna put that in a calculator, how are we gonna do that? Well, first things first, our calculator's turned on, okay? Last button I hit is in red, so uh, on is in red. And then I'm gonna hit N over D. Now that brings up an interesting point, and that is that these buttons in here, okay? They're the main buttons you're going to use when you're working with fractions. Okay, you have N over D in white on the main button. Then the second fu function brings you up into U N over D for mixed numbers. On this button, it would bring you up into N over D to U N over D or U N over D to N over D, which would be improper fraction to mixed number or mixed number back to improper fraction, back and forth. And here is fraction and decimal, decimal fraction. We're not going to touch on decimals today, but it is obviously related to working with fractions on the calculator and it can certainly be a great food for another video. So resuming where we were at with two thirds, let's go ahead and input two thirds into the calculator. So we hit the N over D button right here and that presents us with effectively a blank fraction template. So we're gonna put in our numerator first. N over D stands for numerator over denominator. Numerator is the top number. So if you wanna remember numerator is number one, number one being on the top, that can be a good way to remember it. So I'm gonna push two. That's my numerator. Now, I wanna go ahead and get down to the denominator or the bottom number, okay? I'm gonna hit the right arrow key. There we go, brings me down to the bottom. I'll push three. I'll hit the right arrow key again. Now, if I was gonna add, subtract, multiply, divide, I would go ahead and do that now. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just gonna take a look at this. I've put in two thirds. I've moved my cursor over into the middle where I can add a function, add subtract, subtract multiply, divide, etc. I can put uh, parentheses, I can do whatever I want. Um, and now we're at a good spot. So we have successfully input a fraction. Now, if we wanna go further, let's multiply. So here we go, we'll hit multiply or the time sign. Okay, and you can see it displays a little bit differently on the calculator. It displays as an asterisk rather than an X. So we're gonna do two thirds times one half, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and hit that N over D button again, okay? One's our numerator, number one. Number one's on the top. And two's our denominator, one over two, okay? Hit our over button again. Take a look. Does two thirds times one half, looks good. Two thirds times one half. So it's just the same as if we wrote it, okay? So here's our equal sign, let's hit equals. Equals on this calculator is enter. Perfect, one third. And the calculator always puts things in simplest terms. 
The only exception is when you get to mixed numbers and improper fractions, you will have a simplest terms denominator, the lower number, but not always the simplest terms numerator, and I'll explain that when we get there. But for this, this is perfect. The numerator is smaller than the denominator. One is smaller than three, so we have one third. So two thirds times one half equals one third. Perfect. So let's take a look as we go through. Now, next up, how to work with mixed numbers. Okay, what's a mixed number, first of all? Well, a mixed number would be something like this, okay? Something like two and one half, and that's exactly how we would read that. All right, so let's slide our scrap paper up a little bit. So two is our whole number, and one half is our fraction. So we have two wholes and one half, and that will be read two and one half. Now, let's try to put a mixed number into the calculator, and let's do five and two thirds. That's the example we used over here in our calculator quick start. So let's use that on the calculator. So we're gonna put five and two thirds into our calculator. Let's take a look at that, okay? So we're gonna hit clear. Now, this time we have to use the second key. The green key is second, and the green key puts us in the green. Second will put us into UN over D, or into the mixed number uh, format. So here we go, second, UN over D, perfect. Now what's our whole number? Our whole number is five, so we push five, okay? What's our fraction? Our fraction is two-thirds. Arrow key to the right once puts us in the numerator. Numerator is number one. It's on top. So here we go. Two. Arrow key again, just like before. Three for two-thirds. Arrow key over. Perfect. Okay. You've now entered five and two-thirds, the mixed number, into your calculator. So your calculator looks perfect. Now, what are we going to do? Well, uh, let's multiply it times one and a half. Okay, so we're going to do 5 and 2 thirds times 1 and 1 half. Okay, so our whole number is going to be 1 and our fraction is going to be 1 half. So here we go. Adding multiplication, very nice. And repeating the same process. Second key to get us in the green. Above the numerator denominator key, above the regular fraction key, we have the mixed number. Okay, the UN over D, we hit that second and then n over d puts us in the green, un over d. We have our template for a mixed number. We put one in as our whole number, over button, one for the numerator, because the numerator is on top, numerator is number one, and two, there we go. So one and one half, very nice. Hit our over key again, and we're going to hit enter. Perfect, oh, now what happened here? Okay, so we definitely got the right answer, and the denominator, the bottom number, is in simplest terms. But 17 halves is not in simplest terms. It never is. And that's because you could describe this different ways. The numerator is bigger than the denominator. Okay, The top number is bigger than the bottom number. The fraction's top heavy. However you want to describe it, what it means is if the top number is bigger than the bottom number, if the numerator is bigger than the denominator, it is not truly in simplest terms. So we now have to convert it. Okay, and that brings us over to the next section of our calculator quick start guide, how to convert improper fraction to a mixed number. Okay, so we have 17 halves right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this to a mixed number. Okay, so if we want to put this in simplest terms, we need a mixed number. And in order to convert it, we're going to hit our second key. And we're going to go right here, right to this button here, because over top we have n over d to un over d or un over d back to n over d. In other words, improper fraction to mixed number or mixed number back to improper fraction. Second, hit our improper fraction to mixed number, mixed number to improper fraction key. And you can see that n over d back and forth arrow, un over d, you can kind of see that on the screen even though it looks a little like gobbledygook, you can see that that's there. Hit enter, there we go, we just converted it. It's actually eight and a half, okay, so. Like I said, your denominator is correct in simplest terms, but your numerator was not because it was not presented in mixed number form. So our answer to this is eight and one half. Our answer to this is eight and one half. So I did a great job there with that one. Now, say we hadn't already done a problem. Say we just put in 17 halves, for example. Say that's how uh, things started off. We just wanted to simplify 17 halves. Well, 
Let's go ahead and clear the calculator. And we'll go to n over d. And we'll put in 17 over 2. And we'll hit enter. 17 over 2 equals 17 over 2. Right, not a lot of help. So what are we going to do? Let's convert it. Second, for, uh, improper fraction mixed number, mixed number improper fraction. Perfect. Enter. Done. Eight and a half. Perfect. So whether we have an answer to a problem and convert it, or whether we put in an improper fraction on its own and then convert it to a mixed number, we're good to go. Okay. Now, let's take a look here. How to convert a mixed number to an improper fraction. Well, you could go right back again, just reverse uh, the order of events. Well, don't even reverse the order of events. Just do the same thing again, because this button takes us from an improper fraction to a mixed number or a mixed number back to an improper fraction. That's why the arrow goes both ways, left and right. So if we just finish a problem, we could certainly just go ahead and second key, and we'll hit the improper fraction and mixed number, mixed number and improper fraction. And here we go. We see 8 and a half, n over d, back and forth, u n over d. There we go, 17 halves. Perfect. Now, if we start from scratch, we'll clear the calculator out. We'll put in our mixed number, 8, arrow key over, numerator on top, denominator on bottom. It's 8 and 1 half. Okay. Now, we hit enter. Well, it equals 17 halves. Great. That's one way to convert it. But let's start with it this way. 8 and 1 half. And right on the same line, we can actually put our conversion key right in there. Okay. There we go. And hit enter. Perfect. There you go. 8 and 1 halves becomes 17 halves. Now, if we want to convert it back again, no problem. We'll hit second. Improper fraction, mixed number, mixed number, improper fraction, and it'll bring this mixed number, that 17 halves, that's too big on the top, because it's bigger than the denominator, back to eight and a half. Perfect, and we could do that all day long, okay? Now that concludes our brief tutorial in how to work with fractions using the calculator. Obviously, there's a lot more we can do from here. We can convert to decimals, we can convert to percents, we, you know, limitless. But I think this is a really good start for everyone. So again, back over to the right-hand side of your screen. You'll see this document. Your calculator quick start guide will be downloadable. You have a link to that in the description of the video. And at the end, after you work through the things that we just looked at today, you're going to see that you have the formula sheets. Okay. Now, the first formula sheet you come to is your GED formula sheet. And whether you're taking a GED or not, this can be quite handy to have because the GED formula sheet has a lot of formulas on it that the others don't, and that can be very useful. Similarly, our next formula sheet, also included in the calculator quick start, is the high set formula sheet, and it just simply says formula sheet on it, but this has a lot of conversions, uh, measurements and such, uh, metric as well as standard, uh, and that's something you don't see on the other formula sheets. But it has less formulas than the GED sheet, so there's pros and cons. Now our third and final formula sheet is our task formula sheet. And that's what you see here. Now this one goes a little bit farther into uh, a little bit more advanced math than some of the other ones. So for a student of any test, I always recommend that you review all the formula sheets because you can certainly learn information from each one that's unique. And that's why I included them here in the calculator quick start. Also, if you download the calculator quick start, you have the formula sheet you're looking for. So with that one document, you can work with your calculator and you can also work with the formulas. So with that being said, I hope everyone's doing well. I wish you luck with your studies. And if you, if you need anything, uh, please contact your coordinator. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye.